Welcome back to another update on the Teardrop trailer build. I'm actually posting two videos today. One is in regard to the work I'm actually doing today. The other is an update on everything that's been done since my last video. Uh, I haven't posted in about two weeks because I was having some issues um, with my filming, so it's going to be a mixture of video clips and photos explaining everything I did basically between framing and today. So check out that video um, and stay tuned for this video where I'm going to talk about my electrical work and we're actually going to start painting on the outside today. So check those out. Check out my other videos uh, leading up to this point as well, please. Big visual change. I've got one coat of primer on the passenger side here. Just finished it. I'm using, if you can see, Rust Oleum. Uh, it's the Ultra Cover Gray Primer. This is a latex primer. I'm going over the top of it with uh, an oil based, which is okay. You can't do the reverse. You can't do an oil based primer with a latex paint because it won't stick. Uh, but this should be fine. It's designed to be used with the Rust Oleum paints. Now, I haven't got anything on this side yet. I'm moving over here next. Just this side. I'm using a foam roller, so it'll be nice and smooth, but make sure that you go, if you're painting wood, with the grain when you're rolling, and try and get it nice and smooth. Uh, I will be sanding in between coats just lightly. But the smoother you get the paint, the less you have to sand. Now I started off, I didn't tape off all my trim, uh, but it was really hard to kind of cut in. I'm usually pretty good at cutting in, you know, painting rooms and stuff, but I'm using this foam brush and I just want it to look perfect, so I went in with the painter's tape. I'll be able to hit with sandpaper and really touch up if it bleeds through anywhere. I'll be doing the same thing on the other side with the tape along my trim. Going over this edge, it's no big deal because the aluminum is going to come up to there and uh, I'm going to have my corner trim. So that I'm not so worried about. But these edges you're all going to be able to see, so I want them to look nice and clean. I've got two coats of primer on. We're ready for the Rust-Oleum Gloss Sunburst Yellow. That's what color that top half is going to be. So stay tuned and I will uh, let you take a peek once I get that on there. Well, there's two coats of primer and two coats of the gloss yellow on this side. Two coats of primer and one coat of the yellow on this side, but it's just getting too cold um, to paint. You know, my hands, my fingers are getting cold, so I know it's too cold to paint. But uh, anyways, we did get some color on there today, which I'm happy about. I did get my power inverter wired in. It's going to be mounted on the back of that box. It's just not yet because uh, I'm going to have to varnish in here, so I don't want to have to varnish around it. And we did get our taillights and our turn signals wired in today as well, and those are working. So, like I said, I have more lights to add and more paint to put on, but that's gonna have to wait for another day. Now I have included footage uh, in this, this video to explain how I did all my wiring in of my interior lights. I've got two of them, one up here as well, that's like a train or a bus style, maybe an airplane style light. These swivel around, each one has its own switch, and there's going to be a LED strip light under this shelf. In addition to those, I've included wiring here for my fan. It's like a, it's a desktop computer fan. That's gonna get wired into there. It's a cheap option. Uh, a lot of people go with the fantastic fans that are like two or $300. I got the $29 vent and a free fan from an old computer. 
And the last thing that's going to go in here is this power inverter. I'm going to... As far as interior wiring goes, this is all of my wiring for my lights my and my fan. Um, now that's run through the outside of the uh, Luan ceiling here, taped across the top. It's going to be sandwiched in between the aluminum and the Luan. And I haven't really cleaned up this part yet, but this will continue to come down the side. It will come into a hole in the side of my battery box here and connect. So I've got my negative and my positive to my battery. On the inside, excuse me, I have to move my can of paint here so I can get in. Everything runs to this fuse box. It's an automotive fuse box. It does the job. These kind of fuses you can get pretty much anywhere, standard. Now, it's not on the bottom of the shelf. It's actually, I cut a piece of the Luan and created a cavity in there for all my extra wiring. There's my outside. So it all comes into that box. I'll be able to access it, change fuses from inside. While I'm inside, a couple of the things I got done in here. One of them being my tabletop. I have the folding brackets and I was able to get that mounted on my wall. Right now it's folded up. It does fold down to lay flat against the wall. Unfortunately, it's got all my junk and my lunch up here. So we're going to leave that up for now. Uh, I've started building a top for my trunk box here. I have a piano hinge for it, but it's not attached as of yet. Another big thing I have in here is the blinds. I got these put on. They're just regular window blinds. They ended up being, though, a perfect uh, perfect width. So all I had to do was cut them to length. Um, I also got all of my lights installed and wired in. This one as well. I want to show you where we're at in regards to uh, lights, exterior lights as well. So I've got my regular four pin harness here. That was 11 bucks, I think, at Walmart. Grounded to the frame, sand around, drilled, self-tapping screw to ground that. And I've run everything underneath. Stapled to the floor. All the way back. I welded these brackets on. They're made of old angle iron from the parts of the frame I cut out. And these are just, uh, you know, your standard trailer lights again. Those were at Walmart. I think they were about 20 bucks. These guys I ordered on the internet. Just extra little style for, uh, you know, these are turn signals. So I wired them all together. So, In addition to these brake lights and tail lights. I am going to have one more mounted in the center. It's not there yet. I haven't wired it in. And I'm going to have two side marker lights on these lower corners. That is required for trailers, um, at least here. Uh, I don't know. You'd have to check your local regulations to see if there's some kind of exception, but the way these are wired up, they are working. So, so thank you as always for tuning in to another episode of the Teardrop Trailer Builds. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, check out my channel. Um, covered every topic from starting from the frame on up to where we are now. Uh, like I said, I'll be posting two videos, one to fill in the gaps between the framing and where we are today. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Should be another video coming up uh, soon. We'll have less of a gap in between this time. So thanks for watching. Wow, he talked. <laughs>